Oberlin, the director and CEO of the Wisconsin Historical Society. And it's an honor to be with your, all of you today here on the island, the traditional homelands of the Ojibwe. I'm so happy you're able to join us for this special occasion, for our young ones that are joining us, for the artists that have been working with us, uh, the Ashki Anishinaabe, telling their stories with many of you today. Our exhibit is uh, now opening up. And it's a big treat for all of us, and we're welcoming all of you here to experience that. The Wisconsin Historical Society is very excited to premiere two exceptional exhibitions this year. So with the Manadi Minsoe uh, exhibit, we're also having a second exhibition, Meet Nana Buju. And those are uh, paintings uh, with uh, Rabbit Before Horses Strickland. And he's an internationally recognized Ojibwe, excuse me, the Ojibwe artist that's Red Cliff membership. Uh, it's very, very great to have his exhibition here for many reasons. You're going to see some of his earlier paintings and some of his newer paintings, also some sketches, and also some other artifacts that are blended in. So we hope that you'll be able to go, go inside and enjoy it. But really, I want to extend a special invitation to the young people here, the artists. That's why we're here today. Can I have the artists come forward, please? Thank you. So their work is going to be seen by thousands of people in the museum this season. And this is outstanding. They're from many bands of the Ojibwe. And let's give them a round of applause again. about this too is the exhibit will be seen by thousands of people, but they'll also experience through your work <coughs> the Anishinaabe culture and the historic continuous connections of the Ojibwe people to Mooning Tanning Tanning Minis the island here. And so what's really important about that is the experience that you're bringing to people. And thank you, thank you all for all that you've done. Another round of applause. <laughs> This type of thing doesn't happen alone. I mean, the artists are there, they, they're in their communities, but I want to thank the family members, right? The tribal leaders, the educators, the youth program workers, the facilitators of education in different communities, the homeschool coordinators who supported these artists. At this time, I'd also like to ask the beadwork artists to take a bow again, please. <laughs> We also have other people here that have offered leadership to us, and it's really important from a, uh, a national scale, a tri state scale, and then also tribal leaders. First, Senator Janet Buley is here. She's going to say a few words later. Senator, thank you. Uh, Glenn Carlson was here, our LaPointe Town Board Chair. He had to run for a quick meeting for five minutes. He said he'd be right back. It's a board meeting, so he's doing his job. We thank him. And of course, Bad River Tribal Chairman Wiggins is joining. We also have two members of the Society Board of Curators. That's the Governance Board of the Wisconsin Historical Society. Jerry Phillips was here, a former member, and Bill Van Zant is going to be joining us too. So a round of applause for that. <laughs> so the society, you may not know it, but since 1898, we've been trying to affiliate, we've created this program of affiliating. Uh, local county and uh, local historical societies with us. And so we actually have here tonight one of our leaders of the Wisconsin Council of Local History, Vice President Sherry Peterson. Sherry, where are you? There we are. There. So now it's my privilege to turn the mic over to Bad River Chair, Tribal Chairman, Chairman Wiggins. I just want to say to everybody, um, it's an honor to be here tonight, uh, seeing all of our, our beautiful young people from Bad River and, and knowing uh, all of the hard work that they put into um, the artistry and, and the, uh, the beautiful beadwork that's being displayed. I uh, just want to yep, 
definitely say thank you and, and just let you know that we're very proud of you. Uh, I have uh, my vice chairman, and when I say my vice chairman, that's not my vice chairman, that's more like my vice chairman, uh, my, my leader, my elder, Eldred Corbine here tonight, and so, Eldred. He's uh, definitely been a rock for me for many, many, many years, and uh, just always good to have him, you know, uh, here and, and around. So, um, <clears throat> I want to acknowledge uh, all of our Bad River uh, tribal members, too, um, to... Um, for all of our Bad River tribal members, along with uh, all of the, our Anishinaabe uh, tribal members from LCO and Redcliffe and Sault Ste. Marie country and, and all across the, uh, the expanse of the Ojibwe territory, I want to say, um, very simply, I want to say welcome home. And uh, that's, an, that's an important thing that I think uh, I just want to say a couple of things about. Um, we are on, and, and I, I was asking some of my elders, because I always hear it pronounced different ways, but I'm going to say it just the way I've come to learn it. And, and, if, and, and if I'm saying it incorrectly, I apologize. I'm going to be working on my pronunciation of this place uh, in the future, too. Uh, but Morning Wanakana, you know, it's the home of the, of the yellow-breasted woodpecker, otherwise known as the flicker. This is, <clears throat> this is the final stopping place when the Ojibwe were looking for that place where food grows on the water. This became the, the center of the Ojibwe territory. And, uh, and that's, not a, that's not a small thing to think about. Uh, our, our ancestors were on par with the finest outdoors and, and finest, I guess you'd say, nations of people that have ever been on this planet. Their connectivity and their knowledge of Mother Earth and how to live on this land was unparalleled. Same as the Polynesians and the Hawaiians and the Samoans and, and all of those other countries from Africa into Europe. Our ancestors were on a cosmic level of intimate knowledge with places. And they chose this place as the center of the Ojibwe nation. And that's uh, it's hard to convey, um, but I'll tell you this, that this island and its gateway into what we know now know as the Apostle Islands, and it's dovetailing into just two miles, well from here probably three miles paddle into the Kakagan wild rice beds and that, that uh, wetlands complex of worldwide importance and into the Bad River systems and you've got the Onion and, and all of these other powerful river systems that are all right around this island. When you think about <coughs> what's here, you have what is essentially critical habitat. You have the powerhouse area of fishery uh, power that really, uh, from a fishery standpoint, this area drives the overall health of fish in Lake Superior from the North Shore all the way over east of the Keweenaw Peninsula. When you think of the migratory flyways, I think of the uh, time I served uh, monitoring pipe and clover on Long Island. I told Joan Elias, a naturalist, I said, I seen a pelican with a, with a bent beak and I seen a blue jay murmur that had to be 75 birds strong. I go, I've never seen a blue, bird, blue, uh, blue jay murmur. And she said, I've seen things with birds here that I can't even explain and that I don't really have uh, an answer for. She goes, there's a mystery to how the Apostle Islands and, and Long Island and the wetlands complex interact. She goes, there's a mystery to what it truly unlocks for it from an ornithology standpoint. Meaning, in the sky above us, there are ancient flyways and pathways that we still really don't even understand. And there's probably <coughs> lots of species of birds that are even around no more that used to all come through this place. So <clears throat> from fish to birds to people, you know, our elders tell us old stories that as the, as the center, this place, this island, uh, the center of the Ojibwe nation, that this used to be, they called it, for some of the older ones, they said it was like a Mecca or Jerusalem, that everybody in Ojibwe country and more used to come through here, pass through here, that there were trails from here to the mound builders down in the <laughs> Illinois country, that, and we know from our own stories about Chief Buffalo from Eliza Morrison's books, that they would jump in a birch bark canoe right over here, 
and paddle to Grand Portage, and then they'd take the portage into the Canadian Shield, they'd be in the boundary waters of Canada, what is now known as Canada. Eliza Morrison and her family would jump in a birch bark canoe and they'd paddle to Sault Ste. Marie. It kind of boggles the brain a little bit because that's a heck of a trip nowadays in a car. It take us 10, 12 hours. But I was telling Chairman Buschick, former Chairman of Mole Lake, Kristen Buschick and I were driving <coughs> over, and I said, you know what's funny, is wherever they stopped on the shoreline, that was home. I mean, yeah, they lived on the <coughs> island and this was our home, but those old guys and those old gals, wherever they stopped was home. And uh, it was their immersion and their life in Mother Earth here that, uh, that was just so amazing. But this place was a hub, it was a center. And, uh, and so I just kind of wanted to, to say that from, from jumping off Madeline Island, uh, going up the Bat River, through the Penelope Gap up towards Mellon Country, you're down into Chippewa Lake, and before you know it, you're in those lakes right around where some of our friends from LCO, you're in those lakes right around LCO. Um, <clears throat> if they took off and they paddled the shoreline, and they headed up into the Montreal River, a few uh, hop, skip, and jumps and paddles, and they're in the lakes right around Flambeau country down there and heading over to Eagle River. And over here, and I always think of the old stories, how buffalo used to be a day's walk for Madeline Island. <coughs> Hunting buffalo used to be a day's walk. But all of the, the berries and everything else over in the barrens, they'd go up the Onion River, they'd start portaging, they'd start hiking, they'd be in the barrens harvesting. And then there was an old trail before there was U.S. Highway 2. There was an old trail right there that took our people from the island here into those, those Iron River country lakes, Spider Lake and Pike Chain Lakes. This place was, uh, was a, an amazing place to access what is essentially a little pocket of this world here. And, uh, and that's, that's, that's kind of what I see and feel when I come back here. I don't feel like, oh, this is Red River, so, oh, this is Red River, or anything like that. It's, it's a broader homecoming that represents who we are as one blood, one people, as Anishinaabe, and, uh, and as Ojibwe people. And to that end, like, I want to say, I can hear old Marvin Defoe telling me that from Winnipeg, Manitoba, to Chicago, uh, which is down by Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, to the Prairie Fringe, uh, where the Lakota and Dakota were, and all the way over to Sault Ste. Marie, that, that those four kind of general cardinal points were the overall expanse of the Ojibwe territory, and that it all kind of went shh in a spiritual sense, in a physical sense, back to this place, Mami Wanakana, at the center. And, um, and so, it's, uh, so all of that is packed into those two words when I say welcome home. And so, but I want to say one last thing, that <clears throat> the world has changed greatly uh, with the arrival of, of non-travel people, and here we are in America, which is the greatest uh, social experiment ever conducted, democracy, everybody gets a vote and then think about freedom and the pursuit of happiness. And I want to say <clears throat> welcome home to all of our non-travel people that are here today, too. Because if there's anything that's ever that, that if there's anything that is uh, that I've come to realize and, and something that's getting more and more clear to me as time goes on, it's that we're in a shared home, and the crush of of what's coming in the future, whether you think about climate change or you think about water scarcity or lack of water quality, you can think about population growth and, and the fact that we're water rich and somebody's going to have to you know, give Nevada and Las Vegas something to drink in the future, right? When we think about what's coming in the future, we are in a shared home. And everybody sitting here looking at me, I consider Lake Superior people. You live around this turf and in, this, in these general areas around these inland lakes, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan. We're all Lake Superior people and, uh, and we share a home. And to that end, you know, protection and preservation has been something that we've echoed over and over for ourselves and for our water resources, for our groundwater. I've heard that echo calling out over in Bayfield in recent years. But for the island too, um, it's important that we think of each other as, uh, as neighbors, as people who belong to each other, and who belong to the lands and waters. And, uh, and it's important that we remember we share a home 
and uh, and love, love for each other, love for ourselves, the, the caring and respect that we can we can have for each other as human beings, and the caring and respect we can extend to the land and water is really how we're going to move into the future in a good way. So. Um, the fact that we're here today to celebrate a little bit of Anishinaabe, to look at uh, and see some of the beautiful artwork is excellent. And, you know, it's, it's my, my dream that our young people uh, will continue to learn and connect deeper and deeper into this place here and into some of these other places I've mentioned. And that by the time they're my age, um, that they live a good full life, you know, on a north tip and in their own cabins. and and in the river systems and catching fish and hunting and all of those good things that our ancestors called Minobamatazinwin, that good life. Um, and, and all of those things that retain for us in the trees. So um, with that, I just wanna say, uh, it's really an honor to be here today. I, I love these kids, um, you know, and, and like McCoon Sackley, one of our elders from Owake used to say, you know, I love all of you and, and I'm, I'm really grateful all of you are here today. So, good you. Thanks, Christian. Thanks, Mike. Uh, the Father Club Ferry just showed up, so we've got a few more guests joining us. Kids, you can take a seat for a few minutes. Don't get too comfy because we're going to bring you back up in a few minutes um, because your, your honor song is, is on deck. Uh, we're going to have Val Barber, an uh, elder from LCO, as a very special honored guest for us today. But it's even more special because she doesn't only represent LCO and, and all of Chippewa country, but she used to be the Ojibwe te teacher at Ashland High, so a lot of the Ashland kids here uh, know and love Val in that way as well. I wanted to just do a few little a, a few little housekeeping things before we turn it over to Val, as we're going to have uh, some feast after all the speaking and the song and everything is done. So please stay and eat some food. Uh, Chris has prepared an amazing menu that I've been dreaming about for weeks. And don't forget, uh, Carrie has prepared amazing cake, cupcakes. If you haven't seen it, it's right in the auditorium. No one can get on the ferry without <laughs> taking at least one. She has many. Where is Carrie? How many fla flavors, Carrie? She put a lot of work to make this special. Chris put in a lot of work um, because, uh, and Zach brought the drum. Everybody's here to honor you kids. It it just means so much to us, as, as Christian and Mike both said. So if I may turn it over to Val. myself in Ojibwe because this is what I worked so hard to get some of your kids to learn how to do because no matter where you go in the whole world um, as soon as people find out you're uh, Indian or Native American the first thing they'll do is say something in your language and so I think it's wonderful that so many of them now can introduce themselves um, our language uh, is endangered, it was very nearly lost, and now we are kind of discovering the extent of damage uh, to our people as they look at the boarding schools that existed up until 1969. Um, I attended one in, in myself, and while it was nowhere near as bad as the early ones were, it was still a terrible thing to have to go through. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't talk your language. So uh, for many, many years, um, I, I had to work on the word. But, um, it kind of makes me almost cry every time I think about that. What a beautiful gift that it took, it took away from all of our kids. OK, so I don't want to be depressing here. <laughs> <laughs> Kids can think about this along with me. You know how many times I made you do this. Okay, so I said my name is Bell Barber in English, but we call the English Jacques Nashi Moen, the soldier's talk, 
because they were the first people that we heard speaking English. <laughs> okay. But Abuelas in Kwe in Yuji Kaza, Shinabe Mori. That's my Indian name and my original people's name. And uh, when you say uh, Shinabe Mori, you can refer to other tribal languages also. You know, it's not restricted to Ojibwe, but that, that just means the original people's language. And we are the original people on this continent. Uh, I think so, uh, they said I was from Kure. But I was a sea in Dude, my clan is a bullhead. And traditionally, bullheads were considered the clan that taught. So I guess I'm carrying that on. Uh, I come from which originally meant the lake of the traders, not the traders, but the traders. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, uh, there was a big trading post there a long time ago. And uh, I live on Frog Road. That's the place of the yellow shack with the flicker. And of course, you know, Indian people like to tease each other, so us people from Elsie are saying that, oh, that's the yellow belly slap sucker. <laughs> How mean can you get? Huh? Why'd you look at me when you suck? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, so I kind of translate as I go on. Sandaka, you came out to tell me. That means let's get started in the gas and on the up here. <laughs> okay. How did you want to do? Uh, I'm going to have everyone rise See how loud I can hear. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I was a complete mouse as a, when I was growing up. I was really quiet, and uh, they took the whole United States Marine Corps to get me to talk loud. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, okay. So how did you want to do? Gani gani tien, bujo. So we talked to our creator just like we talked to. Uh, someone we know, we love, and respect. You know, we're privileged that we have that relationship with our, with our Creator. And we call Him our kind spirit, one who leads all things. Okay. Akoe. Akoe means first of all. Mingwe. Gishawe nami yang. That means thank you for being kind to us. Mingwe. That means and thank you for feeding us. We're going to get fed today, I hope. Keep our kasena miku, nungo, je, dunawe, nimiyang, kaye, ni je, vimada zina nik. So we're asking the Creator to take care of us today. We're asking that um, a very, in a very sincere and respectful way. Thank you for, to, for taking care of us. <laughs> and we are asking you to take care of us, our homes, our country, our homes, take care of us wherever we are on this earth, whatever we're doing. And by saying to me, which you want to do? 
My name is Nolan Paulus, and my flower, or my beadwork was the white lotus flower. Jackson Rose, I did a pair of paw.
say a few words. I, I could, thank you. Thank you very much for my opportunity to say just a few words. I want to thank all of the young people who have given us such inspiration to, to go forward and to do things, um, as you so beautifully say, in a good way. Um, I have found great comfort in what you do, but I also find great comfort in doing things in a good way. Um, I want to tell you a little bit when it comes to history um, of what this area, what this day, what it is that we are honoring in terms of history and place and home. I am, of course, the daughter of immigrants. And the immigrant population that I came from were Irish. And they came here in a time of desperation. And when my elders, when my great grand when my grandparents came here, they left everything behind because they wanted to. They had been living for generations, uh, about two or three generations of of starvation and um, and blight in their land. And when we came here, we came with no culture. Um, I have been asked when I was a child or growing up, what are your traditions <coughs> in your culture? I was never taught any. I was never taught any. And I know that there are many like me. Now, imagine coming to a place like this where the concept of home, a tradition, a family is is so intense that you orient yourself to the ground beneath you, to the words that you speak, to the art that you make. And yet, my presence here is as someone who comes later. This, this is your land and I am here now. Yet what I feel is this willingness to have me orient me and my white people, I can become oriented to you and learn from you and learn the culture, how to create a good culture in a good way. Because I don't know if we've been doing it in a good way, frankly, um, all these hundreds of years. But this is your chance as young people to continue to do what you do <coughs> so that you have that, you can share, you can tell us, you can be that example of how you orient yourself with your language, with your art, with your words, and with your way of relating to the ground beneath you. We see it, we learn from it, we are grateful for it. And we are grateful for the ability to be here with you and orient ourselves with you and with your history. I believe fully that that is what this museum is trying to do, is trying to acknowledge what is at the base and how do we orient all the other stories to what came before. And you are doing your part to take, keep that what Keep the part that came before alive, because we need it. We need it so desperately. So thank you to the wonderful singers. It was great. The drum was wonderful. So truly, truly, keep going. Keep teaching. And all of you, keep learning. Go on and teach. The language speakers, the elders, thank you. Thank you for fighting to keep your language alive because without it, we would not have this ability to go forward in a good way with the language. So thank you all, and thank you very much for letting me say it. I'd also like to recognize Liz Arbuckle, uh, who curated the show and with all the students and helped to coordinate. I'd also like to recognize the staff of the Wisconsin Historical Society 
And also our speakers tonight, the valve, Chairman Wiggins, Senator Buley, the drum, and most importantly, recognizing all of you. Thank you for coming to help us celebrate. We were supported tonight by the Shawanga Bay Arts Council, as well as the Wisconsin Arts Board, and our good friends at TBS Wisconsin as well. So enjoy the evening. I also want to give some props to our caterers, uh, to Chris Bosni from Red Cliff for catering the event, Carrie Big Boy from Bad River, I want that cake. <laughs> I know I'm the guy that's standing between the fried bread, the fish, and the cake. <laughs> so, Nick Witch, have a wonderful evening, a beautiful summer, and let's celebrate the art throughout the season.